Hola, hola. Buenas tardes. Good evening. Welcome to En Casa con la Plaza, Dan Guerrero Happy Hour and a wonderful Thursday evening. My name is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications here at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, coming directly from my home to your home. Thanks for joining us. Thanks also to our sponsors, La Plaza de Cultura y Artes Board of, Dur of Trustees, who make this all possible along with our staff. A uh, little bit of an update, what's going on at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Uh, let me share screen with you. Oh, uh, we got, it's a little bit slow right now. Of course, next weekend is uh, is Thanksgiving holiday where uh, we give thanks to all that we have. I am thankful for a lot of stuff, including my family and my friends and my job. So I want to pitch this over to you. This is uh, on December 3rd, there at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, we're having a plática. Was, it's called American Latinos in Hollywood, Struggles and Achievements in the Film and TV Industry, which is very apropos for tonight's happy hour. Uh, on board is Dr. Alma Martinez, actor and professor, Rafael Agustin, a TV writer and author, Angel Manuel Soto, a filmmaker, and Nancy de los Santos, a great friend, writer, producer, and director, moderated by Luis Reyes, a scholar, author, and lecturer. Uh, this is part of... Uh, the Smithsonian's, we, uh, it's called the, here, let me, I can't read the small writing, uh, our shared future reckon, reckoning with our racial past. It's a collaboration we're doing with the uh, Chinese American Museum, which is right across the street from us here at uh, La Plaza, and also the Japanese American National Museum. Starting December 1st through the 17th, we'll have programming at La Plaza, including this platica, uh, uh, a convening session at the Japanese American National Museum, uh, activities at the Chinese American Museum, all culminating on December 17th with a family day at each one of our locations from 12 to 4, it's on a Sunday, with uh, music, entertainment, comida, workshops, and more. Uh, so it's all under the rubric of reckoning with our racial past. So I hope you make it down. There'll be more information to come on that. But let's get down to business here. We're here to have a, a happy, happy hour. And, uh, but what could we do it? What could we, how could we have a happy hour without our host, Dan Guerrero? Please zoom in, Dan. I, I hope I make people happy. You want to make people happy, right? Oh, of course we do. That's it. Especially today, man, we got to find places to be happy because this place is going to crap, ain't it? <laughs> well, parts of it, you know, not, not everywhere. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will just say this. I have stopped watching the news. It's 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 just too much. I know enough that's happening, but I can't be the news hound I was because <clears throat> I want to stay happy. Agree. Agree. Yeah. Just got to skim through it, get the headlines and then get out. Yeah, of Yeah, I mean, you don't want to bury your head in the sand. But honestly, you, 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 you really would not get out of bed if you really looked at everything that's going on. But that's why we have a happy hour. Of course. A happy hour. So um, I have nothing else to say to you. No, I think I, I should leave for a little while and I'll come back uh, once I get a little bit more happy. So enjoy. Okay. Dance. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Well, this evening we have not one, but two very special guests, uh, filmmakers who are creating a sensation in film festivals and beyond. Uh, film festivals everywhere from Cond, that's right, the biggie in France, and uh, New York, at Tribeca, and uh, most recently in Morelia at the film festival there in Morelia, Mexico. Um, this duo has also uh, started their own independent production company with a mission to develop and to produce U.S. Latino stories from an LGBTQ plus perspective. So I'm anxious to hear what they have to say about everything. Zooming in from LA and somewhere in Mexico, Please welcome Miguel Angel Caballero and Luis Antonio Aldana. Wow, those names are a mouthful. Look at these handsome <laughs> dogs there. <laughs> no, I'm not at all happy. Look, Miguel Angel Caballero, Luis Antonio <laughs> Aldana, even Abelardo de la Peña, Dan Guerrero. <laughs> 
And he, I love it in Guerrero, but gee, Willikers, this is those names are so beautiful. <laughs> we sound like soap opera characters. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Novella, yeah. The novella stars, right? Have you ever done novellas? You both look like you could be a novella. Well, <laughs> no, no, actually, no, no, not yet. <laughs> uh, hold on, we have a, a slight schism here. Okay. Um, no, you don't have time for that kind of thing. So um, let's get started here. We have so much to talk about. I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to start with, uh, well, let's start with uh, uh, Morelia, because you've just come back. We're going to talk about your individual backgrounds a little later, but let's start with Morelia, because you've just come back from there with your newest short film, the Ballad of Pita and the Machines. We have a photograph of you here with somebody a little pithy. I'm assuming she was there with Flam Flaming Hot film, right? That's correct. She was, yes, yes. Did she, did she get to see your feature? Did she see Tita? She did not, but you know, we met her actually at an event. It was uh, an Academy, uh, a Toast for Academy members event. Oh. And, um, yeah, and you know, it's funny because Luis and I have always wanted to meet Eva, and we're like, you know, she's kind of like right up our alley. She's so passionate about what she does. She's Mexican American, Chicana, and she does these like wonderful stories. And we just thought, like, one day we're going to meet her. So we're in Morelia at this rooftop at yeah. this toast for the Academy. And I look over at the bar and just kind of glanced over and glanced back. And I said, <laughs> Oh, it's funny, Luis, there's this this uh this woman at the bar looks like Eva and he's like that is Eva so I'm like oh shit that's Eva so we got to say hello and she's such a lovely person and we're like so rooting for her and cheering for her and everything that she's doing for the Latina community she she is an incredible incredible woman I I made her cry once we were at some event and I went up to her and I said because we have a long history. I said, you know, and I really meant it. I said, I don't know if any, I shouldn't say any, but let's just say that I applauded all that she was, she was using her celebrity in the best possible way, which is to tell our stories, to celebrate our culture, to do so much for young people. You know, she took a Chicano study courses and graduated after she was already a star, as you know. No, right. She, yeah. Mm -hmm. She went to Cal State Northridge, if I'm not mistaken. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she did her her whatever you want her final in complete folklorico dragon Calle Olvera. I mean that you got to hand to the girl. She Absolutely. I I love her. I love her. But enough about her. Let's talk about you. I want to get back to Tita. Uh, the full title is the Ballad of Tita and the Machines, which is I. It, it's a sci-fi. It really isn't it. That's kind of new for you. Tell us. We have a couple of posters here. Tell us about either of you or both of you, the, the storyline, a little tagline of what it's about. Yeah, so so the Ballad of Tita and the Machines is about this um, farm worker, this uh, woman who's an, uh, a farm worker and she's about 65 years of age and she starts kind of having complications. So she hires a humanoid substitute to uh, to substitute for her and do the work. But the humanoids keep breaking down because of the harsh working conditions, and it catches the uh, the attention of the creators of this technology. So that's in the gist of of what the short film is about, and it is sci fi, uh, like you mentioned. No spoilers, though. You get you guys have to check it out to see what happens. Oh no, I'd <laughs> like to. And, and Miguel, as I understand, you're you're the son of of migrant uh, film uh, immigrant farm worker. So this. Did that fuel the idea or did it come out and then it you, obviously it was something particularly special for you? It, it was, it was. And, you know, Luis and I have, have known each other for decades. We actually met at UCLA um, and then we started right after we started doing theater together. I'm saying this because Luis has also known my family for many years. He's, he's like, we're like brothers. So I he knows all my family. I know his family. And when the opportunity came up for this film, it was it was the film is a rising voices film. It's executive produced by uh, Lena Wave, Hillman Grad, Two Seven One, and Indeed. So they had this sort of um, competition. They have a, 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 a program called Rising Voices, where every year they select ten filmmakers, ten directors, and they fund their movie. So a friend uh, of ours shorts actually- Shorts and features, both shorts and features? Just shorts, just shorts. They select 10 shorts. 
So a friend of ours sent us a link and said, hey, you know, you you have a, there's this application that opened up and we had 10 days before the application closed. So Luis and I got together and Luis kind of planted the seed of, of the movie itself, uh, of what it could be. And from there we started Wait, kind of like- You didn't even have a script yet? It was just an idea? We didn't have, we didn't even oh. have an idea. We didn't oh even have God. an idea. You had 10 days just to come up with everything. The, uh, the the directive the directive was from you know from uh from rising voices the sort of the directive was the future of work what does that look like what uh what is uh as you know what is your perspective on what that could be and what that is going to be and so you know we had 10 days and we went from zero oh, to submitting wow. a, a 10 page script in in 10 days and it was a it was a cool challenge now that's a, and then to, that's a tribute to your partnership that your vision yeah. and your focus is so clear that you could just jump in and and do it. That's exactly yeah. It was it was exciting to be able to do all that in ten days. And then to answer your question, Dan, um, we did want this to be a sort of homage to my mother who passed away, and she worked along with my dad. She worked the field most of her life. Um, every fruit they picked, every fruit vegetable imaginable in the Southwest. Um, they, you know, during the grape strike, they actually march with Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta during during the uh, the the huelga that 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 was, um, and an interesting story. So so I'll get to that. Like Luis, let's remind them to to talk about the the screening on Monday. But yeah. but to just answer fully, like the the film, we really wanted it to be sort of like to shine a spotlight on our essential unsung heroes that you know put food on our table but they're often rendered invisible in this country and Always. not acknowledged Always. and carry this country on their back you know so we wanted it to be that um and we realized that these were you know sort of like heavy topics we were dealing with so we didn't want to write a drama because it was just going to be like you know a heavy drama so we just had to be innovative in terms of like, how do we get this message across? How do we tell something entertaining, but really pack a punch in terms of what we're trying to tell? Both Luis and I come from very similar backgrounds. We're both queer, we're both Mexican-American, Chicano, working class, grew up in, in, the, in California, SoCal. So like together, we came together and you know the, the product of that was the ballad of Vita and the Machine. But um, I want Luis to just mention something really quick about our screening. The, the film is actually Oscar qualified. So we had a screening last week uh, for Academy voters. And Luis, I don't know. I feel like I'm- No, yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, absolutely. I just think it's a, it's a cool uh, anecdote, you know, uh, Dan, we, you know, in the middle of production, um, you know, and and sort of heading into, into post-production, um, Miguel and I had had a few conversations about, you know, it'd be great if, if, uh, if, uh, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking Dolores out. Dolores Huerta. <laughs> Sorry. Can you hear? Um, Dol yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dolores Huerta could get, uh, could get to see this film, you know, like just, it, it's such a, a specific story. Uh, it'd be, it'd be amazing. And sort of, we just went back to work. So fast forward, um, to last Monday, literally, we had our first, as Miguel said, you know, uh, Academy screening for for Academy members. And we're sitting at the AMC uh, in Hollywood at the Chinese Man AMC. And I see this this small figure walking <laughs> dressed beautifully. And I, and I <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, I elbow Miguel. I said, Miguel, look, look who's walking in. And sure enough, I already knew, but I wanted her to sort of make her reveal. She turns around. And it's Dolores Huerta, you know, and and she I don't know exactly how she she ended up at our screening, but she saw the film and we were able to talk to her about it afterwards. And, you know, Miguel uh, acknowledged her as he introduced the film, you know, and um, it's just an incredible, yeah. an incredible full circle moment, I think, for Miguel and I, you know, to have yeah. her watch the movie. And, um, you know, it was awesome. And, uh Actually, the EPs uh, of 271 film, uh, Constanza and, and Domenica Castro, actually got in touch with her camp and they invited her. Oh, right. and she actually showed up. So that was really, really sweet of them to do as well. So, yeah, it was a full circle moment because like I was sitting there doing the Q&A of the film and the film is about the strawberry picker. 
And she's sitting right in front, this iconic woman that has like done so much for farm workers and, you know, uh, for civil rights. And I'm like, it was just sort of like a full circle moment in terms of like my mother marched with her for rights. And now she's sitting in front of me watching a film that is honoring my mother, who was a strawberry picker. So it was like a really beautiful night that we had. And also, and also, you're missing this this fact. And also, it's Miguel's mom um, was Tita. That that's her name. I mean, she's Consuelo, but um, she was known as Tita, and you know, hence the Ballad of Tita and the Machines. So you know, she's watching us up from up above. Uh, hopefully, really proud and you know, it's so an you, homage you, to her. You met two of the, of the great ladies all within a few minutes. Dolores, who I adore, she's done Happy Hour. God knows. Oh, and, amazing. Uh, Oh yeah, a good friend. I I treasure our friendship. She's she too. She's like Eva. I mean, they're the real deal. These people, you know, that's the best yeah. thing. What are you killing flies over there? I uh, there's a mosquito. I'm like, oh no, you're not getting me. You are not getting me tonight. <laughs> we can see you, or I can see you. I'm like, no. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, those those are shiny lights. People like that. That's that's the greatest thing about our crazy business is the people. And I know yeah. Dolores is that it's show business, but our lives are intertwined with people like Dolores and like Caesar and all those activists because the arts have have featured so much in their the success and what they've done visual artists very much in the early days got the message out about uh the ufw and all that so um yeah yeah, yeah. exactly great absolutely so now how I, I i know that it is oscar uh uh eligible how is that how that happened because i thought it had to be a distribution or have screened for x amount of weeks how do you how does that work so, so the program Rising Voices is, is such a great program for filmmakers. And what they do is, first of all, we premiere at Tribeca, like the 10 films that are chosen for the program premiere uh -huh. at Tribeca. Uh -huh. And, you know, after that, they do a two week run on each of the films in theaters to make oh, them Oscar qualified. Make, wow, that's Yeah, so, so we had a two week run where we screened uh -huh. actually before Blue Beetle. So yeah, it was so that was beautiful awesome. to invite the cast and everybody to see Tita play before Blue Beetle. And it was just so wonderful. So we, we screened for two weeks and then, you know, indeed hired a, a PR company, this, this wonderful woman, Catherine, from London PR Flair, London Flair PR, I'm sorry. And uh, and she got behind the film and, and you know, they're doing screenings and, and getting us write-ups and, you know, playing the the, the the academy game and see if we end up shortlisted on the 21st. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. I don't know that all these programs even existed when I was trying to break into show business, which I still am trying, by the way. But I don't <laughs> know. I'm not kidding. It's sad, but true. I, no, I, I could answer that question, Dan. They did not exist. It's something yeah. that Miguel and I talk about uh, on a regular basis. The 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 sort of the the, you know, the, the business and the terms of in terms of of programs like these that that help you know uh filmmakers like us uh step into you know it's about it's about the work obviously you know the proof is in the pudding like the work has to be there but yes, of course, you know I think I think one of the things one of the things uh that that this program has really championed is this notion of of you know um uh, Talent is universal, uh, and opportunity is not. Is am I mistaken, Miguel? Is that is that? Yeah, yeah, what that's it is? That, that's that it. about yeah. wraps it up. That about yeah, and that wraps it up for me. And I think that yeah, that this program has really has really proved itself to be uh, an amplifier for for all the filmmakers involved. You know, and and we're grateful, and we're we're excited for more people to to get to see the the Ballad of Tita and the Machines. And with today's technology, I mean, people can make a film, you know, with an iPhone. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I've told this story before, but uh, when I was going to East L.A. College, junior college at the time, and I had this best friend who wanted to be a filmmaker, and he was incredibly smart and gifted, and, and he went to USC, and he had to drop out because he couldn't afford it. The film mm -hmm. is, I mean, we're talking 1962, 63, you know, I mean, the... There, there was even less opportunity for anybody, let alone uh, somebody named Padilla, 
you know so mm-hmm. i'm not saying it's easy today at all because it's still no, no. Fucking hard it's still fucking hard and as you say you gotta have the talent i mean you can get the door open but you, you need the talent and obviously you both have that so i will toast you both i will toast. oh my you gosh both. this is but very exciting drinking. we have <laughs> beer i have a modelo especial Okay. And, and I have a champagne I Oh, it's blurred out. You can't I see, see it. You know, you're the only... Okay, I'll tell you this. <laughs> what are you <laughs> drinking, Dan? Martini. Vodka of martini. course a martini. Yes. Of course. <laughs> it's kettle one. It, it's a um, blue... Uh, gray goose straight up with a um, an olive stuffed with uh, uh, blue cheese. Yes. Nice. It's, it, so it's a drink <laughs> and dinner. <laughs> there you go exactly you know, we, we've been doing this show for three years now three years and wow. you're the only the wow. second person to do champagne <laughs> oh my god there you, you go who the first one was who vicky carr because <laughs> it was, it, because that's it amazing was, it was celebrating her 80th birthday Oh my and, god. And we, Car, that is the so whole cool. show with Bob Mackey and Liz Torres and all these people came on. It was a big thing. And she was uh drinking champagne from a flute, just like you. <laughs> Dan, are you kidding me? You have Alice Bag and Vicky Carr. Are you kidding me? It's hilarious. That... And Los Lobos and Linda Ronstadt, and it's it's a whole it's a mixed bag because we're a mixed mm. bag, right? Yeah, exactly. Luis, you were exactly. Luis, you were mentioning something before we got on that is, I think it's really special to say about Dan's show. How important Dan's show was. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I just, you know, uh, sorry, Dan, to put you on the spot, but I just think I just, you know, what we were saying, you know, behind the curtains, pre-show, um, you know, I just think it's it's really, you know, uh, it's an honor to be invited. Uh, by you to to do this and I, I it's we're grateful that that a show like like this exists you know i think i think we you you've been a a, a beacon for so many years and and we're grateful that that it continues you know in this in this sort of virtual space but it's so important for for these spaces no matter virtual or real to exist you know for for uh for our community it's it's super important so i just you know i said it i think yeah. i said it way better before but the, the sentiment <laughs> yeah. is there oh, the thank, sentiment thank is there you very much i'm i'm thrilled at the guests we have i mean you know because usually especially in, in in the latino world even if you're on any kind of a program you get five minutes you get eight minutes you know right. dolores did 90 minutes uh eddie Amazing. almost did like 75 minutes you know she was it's talking incredible. about her grandmother who grew up on an indian reservation and i mean you really get to when we have, you know, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, we really get into things and stories I think that you don't hear anywhere else. So, mm-hmm. so we're right. proud of that. Aren't we, Abelardo? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you for that. And now we first met and you were, you reminded me of that thing too, because I was trying to remember, we met at the Sedona Film Festival. Yeah, exactly. And big fans of yours, Patrick Swice there sends you his regards. Amazing. Uh, emailing yesterday and I sent him the flyer. I said, guess who's doing the show? Because this film I'm about to talk about, I believe uh, won the best short drama at Sedona at the film festival, right? That's correct. Yeah, yes, like yeah, it did. Yep. It's drama. yeah. We have here a, we met. a photo here. This, this film is so beautiful. Aquitzeramo. I'm getting better at it. I know I'm the worst Chicago <laughs> angle. But it is such... It moved me so much, you guys. I mean, the story is so beautiful. And and um, visually, it's so gorgeous. Your cinematographer, I don't know who that is, but it's so beautiful. And and the performances, Mr. Aldana stars in it, along with our friend Sal Lopez, who we all love. Sal, it's just the most incredible film. And I want to show the trailer, and then we'll talk about it. Can we do that? Beautiful, yeah. ¿Tú eres Salvador? Sí. Apasionado, pero hay que caray. 
Solo vengo por lo que me dejó mi papá. ¿Cuánto tiempo estuvieron juntos? Casi. Once años. It is so beautiful, and 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 this film as well, Miguel Angel. You have a, a connect because didn't you kind of grow up here in Southern California and down down uh, there? I did. Yes, yes. I was actually. I'm actually from that pueblo, Acuitramo. We kept the name of the town as the name of our film. So growing up, I grew up. Um, my parents, like I mentioned, they worked the fields, so they would come here, work the season, and then go back to Mexico. So I grew up six months here, six months in Mexico. We traveled back and forth every year. Um, and then when I would go back to Mexico, it was in that small town of Acuitzeramo. And I do remember growing up there, Dan, that, you know, I, I would see, I would often see like elders walking around the town. And, you know, I would, I would see that they were single and I would ask my mom like, hey, why didn't they get married? And she always kind of sort of never wanted to talk about it. You don't ask that, like, don't ask those questions. So I didn't think of anything when I was a child, but then when I, you know, as I got older and I actually embraced my own sexuality as a gay man, I started looking back and reflecting in this small town that, you know, that is is uh, uh, like under the blanket of Catholicism and Mexico itself, that's very homophobic. I started thinking like, what would happen if an elder is actually like, it's not that they didn't find somebody who they wanted, but what if they weren't allowed to love openly the person that they wanted? And I think the idea started kind of like circling and that's where the idea of Acuizaramo came from. Um, and yeah, we shot it in the town that I grew up with, which was sort of a, a little bit odd, um, not odd, but it was it was a bit surreal for me. I would uh, say to have a, a team of because it's a small town, it's not even a city. So to have like a team of people of of filmmakers, like sound equipment, everything in this small town that I grew up in, this the streets that I would walk in as a child, wow. telling a story and making a statement about homophobia in small towns and in pueblos like in you know in Michoacan. It was very gratifying and very surreal. And just really quickly, I do want to say that the DP for the film was is Philip Alexander Narvaez, who is a super talented DP. And he went with Luis and I, and we went scouting um, a year before we shot the film. And, you know, we, we, we looked at a lot of spaces and he was involved since day one. And, and it's because of him that it also looks so beautiful. It is just lush. And I recall one of you, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was Luis or Luis, you can answer, but you guys did it like for a dollar fifty, and you used people that <laughs> would live there in the village as actors. And tell us about that shoot. Yeah, I mean, it was it was uh it was absolutely uh, you know, uh an indie, indie, indie project. You know, we we did the 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 I think it was Kickstarter that we that we used to to sort of complete the funds and we were down to I think the final day to to meet our goal, and and this gentleman from out of nowhere sort of you know I think he donated randomly somebody that we didn't know uh, Dan donated I think about two thousand dollars that that pushed us over the goal so that then we could receive the funds so it was absolutely um, you know an indie 
uh, project, you know, and and it was I have a really interesting story, actually, you know, just sort of like a, I love I love these conversations. Can we because we could get into like the the sort of the B side, <laughs> the B sides of <laughs> of of things, you know, but um, I remember that when Miguel first wrote the screenplay, right, he wrote it. I went away. He he had mentioned idea. Hey, you know, this was the second short uh, our 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 company Cavaldana had 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 made, and he's like, "Hey, I want to tell this story about uh, this man and the guy's lover." Sort of goes to see him. His strange uh, son goes and sees them, and I was like, "Yeah, dude, write it. Let me see see what happens." And so he wrote it, and and I read it, and he he wrote it in English, right? So I think the the initial idea was to to shoot somewhere in in uh in Oxnard, right, Miguel? Like we were gonna shoot yeah. somewhere. So we were like trying a, to work a, with what yeah. we had and right. we we're like, we know people in Oxnard. It looks like a small town. Right. Let's shoot it there and kind of like talk about this topic because we have connections there. Um, we didn't at that moment think we could raise like money to even fly the crew out there. So th that's what he's. So initially, yeah. yeah, it was there. Yeah, exactly. It was in Spanish. And so then and, the, and so then Miguel goes, he's like, hey. Uh, and I happen to be in Mexico at this moment. This is a, a, a critical part of the story, right? And he's like, hey, Morelia is having a, a, a script competition. I'm going to translate it into Spanish and just, you know, mail it. Since you're in Mexico, I'll, I'll uh, email it to you and just send it in. Since you're down there, it'll be faster. And so I'm like, yeah, perfect. Yeah, let's do that. That's perfect. So he he emails me the Spanish version of the screenplay that had never existed. I'd only written the, I, I'd only read the English version and he sent it and the story just came out like, like literally I read it in Spanish and I said, I answered it. I wrote him a message or texted him. I said, Miguel, this movie exists in Spanish. Like this is how this movie needs to be filmed. It needs to be uh -huh. filmed in Spanish. And, and then that's when Miguel was like, well, look, if we're feeling that, then we have to go scout Aquitzeramo, my town. And so, you know, whatever, the rest is his, the rest of the story is history. But but really it was that I, I found it, I, I, I think that was such a huge lesson for me to sort of read something in a in a language initially, and then it be translated and then sort of really find its 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 voice, its, voice, its soul its as voice. a story. It's you voice. know? And and yeah, and so then that's it. We uh us uh, the cinematographer Philip Miguel and I we went down and we uh, we scouted and the minute we were driving the actual actually the the beginning of the film is when we're driving into that town I knew you know immediately I I think I might have looked over to Miguel and said Miguel we're filming here I don't even like driving into oh, into yeah. his hometown it just it just seem it it seems so right so organic. Yeah. The, the language makes such a difference. Many years ago, do you remember an actor, Luis Avalos? Yeah. He yeah, was I a do. Cubano. Wonderful, beautiful soul, beautiful actor. And we lost him too many years ago. And he was way ahead of his time because he wrote a screenplay called Cabaret Tijuana. It oh, was wow. in Spanish. And it was about a straight Vaquero, who goes to a bar unknowingly and falls in love with this gorgeous female singer, who, of course, is a man in drag. Oh, mm. wow. And and he can't help it. He loves that person, you know, and it it is. And he wrote it in Spanish and it was the most beautiful film. I can't even tell you. And I, I was casting in those days and he had me, uh, you know, get some matches. And we did a reading and it was absolutely gorgeous. And then for reasons unbeknownst to me, he decided that it should be in English. And let me tell you, it lost everything in the translation. I mean, yeah, in Spanish, wow. it was poetic. It was poetic and it was so moving. And in English, it just it just lost mm. it all. I mean, yeah. so I would imagine you're right. I, it wouldn't doesn't mean it wouldn't have been a good film in English in Oxnard, but I bet you it couldn't possibly have been the same. No, just, absolutely yeah. not. And also just the, the 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 fortune of having you know and and Dan, you know these are these are uh, friends that that we have in common, you know, but but Sal Lopez and the Latino Theater Company, you know what I mean? We've been 
yeah. been lucky enough to work with them since we were very young artists, you know, uh, Jose Luis Valenzuela and Evelina Fernandez, Al Lopez, Jeff Rivas, Lucy Rodriguez, oh, Luca yeah. Tiveros. I mean, I'm name calling all of them because it was they're they're just such uh touchstones in both Miguel's and my career. Most and everyone's to, career. Most everyone's yeah, career. Exactly. And and I think I just think, you know, when when Sal read read the screenplay, and Miguel, you can go into the details of it, but the point that I'm trying to make is when Sal read it, decided to do it, and then he just, you know, pours his magic over it. You know oh. what I mean? Oh, it's he- just it becomes something something incredible and you just sit back and and learn and listen and you know you can't be Sal yeah. Lopez you can't be Sal Lopez well he has such and a, also like that comes out in all his work go yeah, ahead yeah absolutely like yeah it was such a an incredible journey to to work with Sal on this I was gonna say also like one of the the thing you're absolutely right Dan about the shoestring budget that we had with it we really had like no money. <laughs> So Luis and I, and it's, it, I'll kind of explain a little bit how the film actually came together and was able to, to come to fruition or we were able to get it done. Luis and I, in the past, on stuff that we've produced, we've kind of um, developed this shadow mentoring program where we actually bring kids from like communities, from underrepresented communities on set so they could see the process of filmmaking and sort of demystify uh, filmmaking and and we hope to kind of that they're inspired and we kind of set them up either with a DP with a producer with a director and kind of they come in for a bit so that's something that we've done for Aquitzeramo I kind of like was trying to figure out because like Luis said when we we saw that it could take place in Mexico not only because it was the language but also transferring to a remote town in Mexico sort of isolated the main character a lot more because ha- taking place in the U.S. in a small town, sure, it could be homophobic. There could be a lot of things. But yeah. here in the U.S., ultimately, yeah. in yeah. Mexico, it's something else. So it added so many layers that I'm like, okay, how is this going to happen? So I actually got in touch with a university in Morelia. And I went and I saw the director of the university. And I said, look, usually there's a shadow mentoring program. We can't do that. But what I would love to do is pick your five top students and I will mentor them myself in every department. I need a script supervisor. I need a a, a, a production manager. I need a first AD. I need these. So she was very gracious and she kind of like hooked us up with like four students and actually one was from Morelia, but not a student. And they actually came on set. So I actually mentored them. So what I did here in the U.S. is like for a script supervisor, I did the script supervisor folder. I prepped all the notes. I kind of like guided her and I had meetings with everybody in every department. These are students that, you know, are in Morelia and young and and a lot of them were like kind of an experience on full on production. So it was kind of this mentorship. And then what we did is we put them in leading positions, not as a shadow program. But they got credit as AD. They got credit as script supervisor, as makeup, as everything. And it was very kind of like gratifying to be able to also mentor these students. And they were in awe. Yes. Like we've never been in a production that's this big. This is great. And including like the script supervisor, Siomara, like a, a year later, she called and she said, can I use the film as kind of a proof that I've worked on a production? I'm like, Absolutely. So she got this like huge job in Querétaro, Mexico, because she worked on that project. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, so it was, it was really, but it was because of them that we were able to set the crew together because we had no money. We just had lodging and food and a lot of gratitude and, you know, being thankful to everybody that was part of it. And they came on and they did an excellent job. Yeah. And we built our crew and it was skeleton crew, but we had a lot of students that stepped up to these leading positions. And because of that, like we were able to create Aquiteramo. How long a shoot was it? Three days. Three days. Oh, you're kidding me. No, three, days. three days? Three yeah. days? Yeah. Pita days. was also, the ballad of Pita was also three days. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, we're on this three day shooting thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day you can do a whole week. 
Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, as long that would as, be a luxury if we could do yeah. five days. <laughs> no, but as long be... as it falls on an odd number, we're good. Now, now, now. Five, no. seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 20, 25 it. days. Yeah. Uh, 23 okay. days shoot. Well, now that's going to become <laughs> your luck thing now from now on. You're going to yeah, exactly. do six weeks, but we can do six weeks in two days. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we should let people know that that you often write the scripts together, and right. you sometimes star in them, and you always direct. That's correct. Yes, that is correct. Now, that beautiful film, and you see how I'm avoiding mispronouncing it again. I know it's a quitzetimo. Oh hell. Uh, it's too hard. You should have done Oxnard. Why didn't you just <laughs> Ventura? <laughs> um, but but that wonderful film that shall not be mentioned um, was a prequel to an earlier film that I guess was it uh, was also Sedona Sunflower. Is that right? Yes, Broken Broken Sunflower, Sunflower Hearts. Hearts. Okay, yeah. so Absolutely. Sunflower. Okay. And and you and, you start in that as well, Luis? Yeah, me and me and uh, Matias Ponce. Yes, and uh, that, and Luna Camarena. You can't forget yeah. she 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 makes the movie. The wow. the film Broken Sunflower Hearts was kind of like like it's a story of 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 this guy that's that's raising a single father who's raising his daughter, and his ex shows up at his door a year later trying to reconcile with him, trying to like maybe, you know, uh, kind of have like a closure between them. So the film itself is called Broken Sunflower Hearts. And, and for me, it was like sort of an exploration on the alchemy of love. Like if you love someone so much, but you break up with them, that love doesn't go anywhere. There's a transformation of that love going into friendship of that love transforming into something else. And this film, I really wanted to capture that moment of these two men that love each other dearly, but be, they just can't be together and capture this kind of love between them and sort of heartbreak that they cannot be with each other. And that one was broken Sunflower Hearts and Luis played Anthony, uh, the protagonist, the single father. Uh -huh. um, and uh, and yeah, and 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 then uh, the following one, Aquitaramo, was even though we shot it after, was a prequel to that movie when Luis and the character, um, where Anthony and and Sam were actually together. So they in Aquitaramo at the end, you oh. see both of them in the car, and this is before their breakup. And there was going to be a third, which was we were going to shoot last, but it was how they met, and then this little thing called pandemic kind of hit us <laughs> and that all went down the drain i'm trying yeah. to find and i can't find it your production company the name of it i love because of course it's a your two names together and then the word alchemy Cavaldana right. alchemy yes Cavaldana alchemy yeah I, I actually looked up alchemy because we all know what it means but i want to know specifically and it was such a wonderful description because it said everything about you because it said about uh, that it was about transforming about transforming right. and that whole vision and I thought well no wonder they call it alchemy because that's exactly what you're trying to do with your films but but now you're you're by design you're 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 in a very like with Gaytino like it's a double niche you know right. Latino and 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 gay and I guess you're okay with that because you're doing it how do you feel right. about that? Obviously, the, the truth is that you don't have to be gay or Latino to enjoy your films any more than you had to, to enjoy my show, but you got to get their seats. You got to get their butts in the seats for them to know that. So right. how are you handling that or dealing with that, being in this double niche, even though they're universal themes for sure? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I mean, I uh, think... oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, okay, go so it. I mean, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just say this much. I think I think for Miguel and I, you know, uh, being queer, being being Chicano, being Latine, uh, filmmakers, uh, writers, Miguel being a director, me being an actor, um, you know, it's really important for us to to sort of just really explore and 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 embrace uh, that lens which through which we see life, right? Uh, it it's I think I think there is there's I mean I think for a lot of queer people a lot of gay people 
um, I think there's a moment uh, of shame that you have to work through. You know what I mean? I think I think that that uh, us as queer people, we're sort of uh, we grow up uh, a little delayed. You know what I mean? Like we have to we have to work through a lot of the stuff that 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 I think we 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 hide behind. You know these these this these facades and 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 masks. You know, and and I think you know, and I won't speak for me, Miguel, but you know, for me as an artist, you know, there 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 came a moment where where it, it no longer became a hindrance, but it became a superpower, right? It became it became a point of 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 integrity and and pride, you know, and and I think that now together, uh, Miguel and I work from that point, you know, we we work from that point of of power and. And and storytelling, where you know we tell these stories, and and we infuse it with 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 the things that we know, the things that 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 we know uh, our community needs to see, and not just our community, but I think the world at large, right? And you know the the ballad of Tita and the Machines, you know it's it's you know uh, Tita in 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 that film, you know she's lost her 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 spouse who was a woman. Pilar, you know, uh, and and that comes to light in the story. It's not it's not at the 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 sort of the center of the narrative, uh -huh. but it just happens to be a fact. You know, this is this is what it is, and I think and I think it's 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 important and 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 it's important for our community and again the world at large to see stories where where it just is. You know, it it, it normalizes. It is it is part of our community it has been for for millennia you know as part of of human human nature and and we want to to sort of uh sprinkle our stories and 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 make that uh a point of reference and do the two of you only work together on projects or do you have separate careers and then come together on some things well we we write a lot of our projects are created together Right. Um, the Ballad of Tita and the Machines we created together. We have feature films that we've in written five together. minutes. You forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, exactly. At, during our lunch break, we created. <laughs> um, but but I Luis has his own projects. I have my own. But I think at the moment, at this moment right now, we're really pushing for our collective projects in the feature and TV space forward. Um, but yeah, we write together. Like it's funny because we. You know, when I write alone, I have my own voice and that is my voice and it's clear that it's my voice, um, you know, and Luis as well on his own, that's his own voice. But when we write together, there's a very special magic that comes together that we collectively become a voice. And yeah. I can't do that alone. I can't I can't say like now I'm going to write something in the tone of Luis and Miguel. It's like, no, I can't. I need Luis to do that. And neither can he. So I think it's kind of like, a, I guess, a third writer. It's I write alone, he writes alone, and then together is a different voice. And, you know, we're just embracing that voice at the moment. And we're kind of like, you know, pushing the projects that we've collectively written at the moment. And it's, 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 a, it's quite a process. It's not easy. I find it a lot, a lot more time consuming to write with a partner. But at the same time, I find it super gratifying to have somebody there and and you know we have differences of opinions and we find a way to bridge our differences and move forward and then ultimately all these disagreements that we may have moving forward or about a character or about a storyline only makes the collective story stronger sure. and we find our voice together so yeah we we do have our own projects but we also like uh you know we are writing a lot collectively we have to wrap in a minute, but first I want to uh, out you uh, from your days as an actor. Don't we have an image here? Uh, I'd be <laughs> like, oh, oh, no. no. Oh, oh yes, dude. That's so amazing. Wait, hey, at least you got top billing, too. Yeah, yeah right? That so project's what, amazing. You, you decided acting wasn't for you? Or do you still want Yeah, to really quickly, that film, that, that feature was directed by our dear friend Alberto Barbosa, and it's yeah. an incredible oh, feature. Know, yeah. Yeah. So I, about eight years ago, I decided I wanted to step into the director's seat. And because of everything, also everything that Luis is saying, like, 
I was an actor and I was hoping that, you know, you, you start off with dreams that I would just be an actor, make a lot of money and then be able to fund a lot of projects for our community. Right. And, you know, about eight years ago, I realized that's not happening and I have no control over the stories being told. Yeah. I need to step into the director's chair. And I also am not comfortable that in all of my career, I have not told a queer story before. And that's when Luis and I got together and we're like, let's 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 start this company that where we tell like Latina stories in the U.S. with an LGBTQ perspective um, and and go at this together. And that's how Cabaldana Alchemy was formed. And for me, acting did sort of lose the, the, the kind of passion that I had for it. Right now, what is my passion is directing, is creating these stories about our community from our vantage point of like what we're trying to do. So that super fuels me. But I do think I was, I've been acting since I was 13. So I was doing a lot of commercials and everything that you could imagine. And I was fortunate enough that it would, that was my job. It kept me going, doing commercials here and there. Um, but uh, but making the transition as, as a director, I feel like it, it's such a big advantage that I have because directing actors is one of my favorite things to do. And coming from an acting background, sure. I really find the language to yes. really work with actors and kind of like get them to a place where I feel the story needs them to be, but not force them or mechanically direct them, but work with them in the world that we create together and kind of guide them, guide them. And then sp finally, when it happens, it's a beautiful thing to be behind the camera and just kind of capture these moments. We have, we do have to wrap it, but one last question. You're, you're, you've done shorts so far, but I know both Tita and the, the uh, film that shall not be named, aren't you? <laughs> and I, you know, I studied it. I was really doing well this afternoon. I don't know. Anyway, aren't both of those, aren't you looking to make them full features? Or did I dream that somewhere? Yeah, we have three. We're working on the Ballad of Tita and the Machines as a feature now. We have Acuitramo as a feature completed already screenplay. And we also have uh, Angel in Retrograde, which is another uh, queer LA story, which is one of five films selected selected this year at Tribeca to, to go and pitch there. And it beat out like a thousand scripts. So we were one of five uh, oh. scripts that were selected. And that one's called Angel and Retrograde. So we have those three that we're passionately pushing forward and, and figuring out avenues of how to make them. Well, I toast you once again for all you're doing and all that you will do. Okay. And um, a lot of them come back on. <laughs> all right. Aquí estoy. Uh, how this are you? <laughs> fascinating conversation i really enjoyed it and uh oh, amazing you know, I enjoyed it too. With, with all the talk or the, a new report that came out regarding the lack of latino representation in feature films and uh and and in t mainstream tv i, I think in, in five years we won't be hearing that much you know with the caliber of films just the short that you showed uh the trailer for the short uh i think you've got a great career ahead of you and and i think we'll be seeing a lot more and i really uh, I'm, amazing uh, yeah, proud that we're able to to showcase you on this uh, little happy hour with Dan. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank it's you quite so a much. pleasure to be here. Thank yeah, you both. Thank pleasure you for to be here. Me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Willardo. Thank you. And 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 let's keep fingers crossed. Maybe we'll all be in Sedona this year. It's possible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> possible. We would love to. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Tiene que invitar. You know. Sí, exactly. <laughs> Vente, Bernardo. <laughs> you should come, Bernardo. You, you and Linda. It's we wonderful. <laughs> we can be beautiful the, there. You can be a shadow. Um, you can make shadow mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Thank you. Amazing. All right. Thank you, boys, so much, gentlemen. I appreciate it, and I hope to see beautiful. you in persona very soon. Thank Likewise. you very thank much, you, Dan. Thank, thank you, Bernardo. Thank you, Bernardo. Nos vemos. Buenas noches. Okay. And thank you out there that, who joined us tonight on Dan Guerrero Happy Hour. With this fascinating conversation with these uh, incredible filmmakers. Uh, and uh, as I said, we'll be seeing a lot more of them and their, their films uh, coming to screens and, and near you soon, hopefully. All right. Well, uh, that wraps it up for tonight's Dan Guerrero Happy Hour. And uh, we hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, Dan's uh, next guest is still to be revealed, but I'm sure it's going to be a great one as all of his guests 
have been these past three years. Can you believe it? Uh, if you can't, didn't catch this entire episode, if you want to see it again, please, it'll, we'll be posting it on our YouTube channel at La Plaza LA. And of course, it lives on our Facebook channel at La Plaza LA as well. Uh, we're a little slow at La Plaza the ne next couple of weeks as far as programming is concerned. But of course, our museum is open uh, Wednesday through Sunday, 12 to 5. We have our incredible show, 18th and Grand, the Olympic Auditorium, which is still on display both on the first and second floor. Uh, and then, of course, Calle Principal, LA starts here, and all the rest. Uh, and our La Tienda is open. Our gift store is open. Uh, get that holiday shopping done early this year. Uh, we got lots of stuff for you to take home uh, for your loved ones. And uh, as I mentioned earlier today, uh, on December 3rd, there at La Plaza Platica, uh, on, uh, let me see if I could find the title again. I'm, I apologize for that. Um, uh, it's called uh in small writing here it's a platica american latinos in hollywood struggles and achievements in the film and tv industry uh it'll be an, a very insightful illuminating conversation with dr alma martinez rafael agustin a tv writer and author angel manuel soto nancy de los santos moderated by luis reyes a scholar author and lecturer it's free of charge on december 3rd at 1 p.m there at la plaza de cultura y arte so Hope to see you there for that event. If not, come on by. Uh, I'm, I'm around. We'll see you. All right. Muy buenas noches. Hasta la próxima.